Welcome to week three of Explore the Bible, continuing in the book of Acts. And excited about this one as we're in chapter 14 today. Uh, Paul's first missionary trip is going on, so we're going to pick up in the middle of it. Before we dive into the passage, if you haven't already, be sure and subscribe. Hit that little subscribe button. I'll give you time. Okay, then hit the like button, the thumbs up. Okay, now good, great. Way to go. Now, if you've got a comment or a question, put it in there. Tell us where you're watching from. And if you haven't already, share the video with somebody. We appreciate it if you'll do that. If you want to support our work, go to give.exposedtochrist.com and you can support our mission work as well as our teaching. Okay, we're going to look at Acts chapter 14. Here we go. When the crowd saw what Paul had done. Well, what had Paul done? You know what I'm going to say, right? You know where I'm headed? Read the first part of the chapter. Paul has done his, he's on his mission trip. He's been in Antioch. He's been in Iconium. He spent a lot of time in Iconium. There were a lot of people one to the Lord, but there were also people who were against him and uh, Jews and Gentiles alike who were against what he was saying. So he left there. He's gone to Lystra and to Derby. Uh, eventually he's in Lystra here. Comes into Lystra, sees a man who is, uh, whose feet don't function. They don't work. He heals the man. They see what he's done. People gather. They're, they're excited about this. a great thing, right? They shouted, saying in the Laconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the town, brought bulls and wreaths to the gates because he intended with the crowds to offer sacrifice. Okay, here you go. Paul and Barnabas have done this, and now they are gods. I mean, they're not saying you have come from the gods. They are saying you are the gods. In fact, uh, Barnabas is going to be Zeus and Paul. He's going to be Hermes. All right. The gods have come down to us in human form. Here they are. Hermes, the messenger god. So Paul's he's the messenger. He's the speaker. Right. And the priest of Zeus, who's got a temple nearby, he brings some bulls over and some reeds, and they're going to offer sacrifice. They're about to have a big church meeting here. I mean, look, here's what we're talking about. We're talking about a town where the, the majority of the people are, are pagans. They, they worship the Greek and, and Roman gods. So they're worshiping Zeus and Hermes and the others. That's who they worship. This is not a place where there's a synagogue. It's not a place where there's a lot of, of uh, good people who, are, who follow the Jewish um, lifestyle or even... You know, there's no Christians there. Obviously, they're pagans. That's the main religion there. And so when they see this happen, the answer is, you guys must be gods. That's a little crazy, don't you think? I mean, that's just crazy. And look what happens. The apostles, Barnabas and Paul, tore their robes when they heard this and rushed into the crowd. Okay, I think that because they were speaking in the Lyconian language here, right, they didn't understand what was going on, but when they heard and figured out what was happening, they rushed into the crowd, and they're like, people, why are you doing these things? We're people also. We're just like you. We're proclaiming good news to you, that you turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to go their own way. Although he did not leave himself without a witness, since he did what is good by giving you rain from heaven and fruitful seasons and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even though they said these things, they barely stopped the crowds from sacrificing to them. So he, Paul gets up there and he's like, what are you doing? Right? We're people. We're just like you. We're just people. We're not gods. Okay? But we are proclaiming good news to you that you turn from these worthless things to the living God. Okay, here's the thing. Paul usually goes into the town, he goes to the synagogue, he starts teaching there about Jesus being the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, and he gets kicked out of there, you know, eventually, and then starts with people that believe him and that will follow him. When he gets to Lystra, he's not preaching to the Jews who have an understanding of Old Testament Scripture, who, who have a belief in, in Yahweh, he's not, you know, even a single God, he's not talking to those people, he's talking to these pagans, and so his message is, adjust to the group that he's talking to. It's a good point for us to remember. He adjusts his message the way he presents it, not the not the the substance of it, but the way he presents it because of who he's talking to. And he says, look, you need to drop these worthless things. This stuff you're doing here, this stuff is worthless. I mean, he says it right out to him, right? 
And you need to follow the living God. Who is this living God? He made heaven, earth, sea, and everything in them. Not the, he says, it's not you know, a whole bunch of different gods who are jealous of one another, compete with one another, fight with one another, and all have responsibilities of different parts of the world. He says there is one living God, and that living God made everything. Right? And he allowed the nations to go their own way. He allowed people to do that, but... He did leave himself a witness. He left himself. He, he says it opposite. He did not leave himself without a witness. He left a witness. And we might think that's the Jewish nation, but that's not who he's going to talk about here. What he's talking about here is nature, right? He gave, good, he gave you good rain from heaven. He gave you fruitful seasons, filled you with food. Look around and see all of this created by God who took care of you even though you didn't know him. He gave us water from the sky. He gave us food to come up from the ground, you know, and he filled your heart with joy. He filled your heart with joy. These this moments that you had that were wonderful, those, those came from God. This world does not give us wonderful. This world is hard. This world is hard. But God gives you joy in the middle of it. Those little moments that you had, maybe it was one or two, or maybe it's several, or maybe they were long or short, whatever, that came from God. It was God's witness to you of himself that there is something better than just this world. I love that. I don't know that we've talked, you know, we talked about Romans 1, Paul talks about the witness of, of creation, and he talks about the witness of your conscience. But there is here, Paul talks about, a witness of joy. The fact that you enjoy something, anything, means there must be something above and beyond this because this right here, there's no joy. And even then, it was hard to keep the crowds from sacrificing to them, right? They barely stopped them. And then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and when they won over the crowd, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city thinking he was dead. After the disciples gathered around him, he got up and went into the town. The next day he left with Barnabas for Derby. Okay, so... These Jews come from Antioch and Iconium, right? From the towns where Paul has been. The towns where people followed, but also where people opposed. And strongly opposed. Iconium was really rough for Paul when he left. And when they get there, they went over the crowds. And the crowds so much that they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, they thought they'd killed him. Now, isn't this crazy that here, they said, these people are gods, right? Right, here it is. They're gods, the gods have come. And here, let's kill them. You know, it's one thing to say, to go to go from your gods to, okay, you're just men. But you're really good. It's another thing to go from your gods to your criminals. And that's what the, the crowds that were turned by the Jews that came, they won over the crowds to turn completely against Paul and Barnabas. And they, they stoned Paul. They thought they'd killed him. They dragged him out of the city and left him to die. They thought they'd killed him. Listen, the crowds are not always right. In fact, I, you could almost say the crowds are rarely right. When there is the crowd that has decided something, just because they're loud and just because they're forceful and just because they can enforce their decision, their will on others, does not make them right. We need to remember that, that just because there's a crowd saying something does not mean that what they're saying is true. Remember that. It's very important. Okay. And, and then I love this. The disciples gather around him. I'm sure they're praying for him. And he gets up. And what does he do? Well, he goes right back into town. Paul was tough. Man, he was tough. He just went right back to town. You're not going to scare him off. He goes right back in there. Because there were people that believed. There were people that followed. He wasn't going to leave them abandoned. And the next day, they go to Derby. And then we have this kind of completion passage. After they had preached the gospel in that town, that's Derby, and made many disciples, many disciples, they returned to Lystra, to Iconium, and to Antioch. You see that? He went right back to the places where there had been great rejection, but there had been followers. And what did he do? He was strengthening the disciples. He encouraged them to continue in the faith. The, you know... Paul was tough because he would, he would willingly go into places where there was no gospel witness. He would share the gospel, and he would win the victories, and he would lose the loss, take the losses, you know. And he would, he would be punished sometimes for that, and it would be hard for him. But then he would go to the next town. But the truth was there were other people who stayed in that town and continued to be believers. And so Paul went back to those believers that were living in the places where there was... There was um, Great opposition, outward opposition, forceful opposition, 
um, active opposition. They went right back there to strengthen the disciples because those disciples were going to have to live there. And look at the message. Look what Paul says. It is necessary to go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. This is not the typical uh, health and wealth message from Paul, is it? Paul says, look, you will follow Christ. It's going to be hard. I'm just telling you, it's going to be hard. So I'll buck up. Be strong. Encourage one another. You don't give in. Stand up to that. Win those battles or fight those battles and don't, don't back away from them. Love those people even though they say terrible things about you. Love them and, and share the gospel with them and pray for them and, and live in the midst of them even though they hate you and even though they revile you and even though they say terrible things about you and even though they may persecute you. Live there and love those people. And then he appointed elders in every church and prayed with them and fasted and committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. They were encouraging to the church. Hey, we need to hear this, especially in Western, um, Western world and let's say in American Christianity. It is not always easy to be a believer. And we respect often and laud those in other countries who are suffering for their faith, but boy, if we even had the tiniest little bit, we'd start whining and crying and griping and all of that. Hey, it's not easy to be a believer. And if you think it's going to stay easy or become easier in America, you are mistaken. Be strong. Live a hard life for the sake of the gospel. Encourage others because we need to be strong. It is not easy. You will go through hardship as a believer. Get ready for it. Be strong in the middle of it. That's Paul's message. That's a hard one. I know it's a hard one, but it's one I think we definitely need to hear. God bless you. Thank you for teaching, for watching. Appreciate that. Uh, be sure, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, the like button, comment, share it with somebody else. See you next time.